Hey boys, what's going on? We got Kaiser. We got the Kaiser Genie. Remember when this came out in titanium? So it was more expensive then. But now this is in micarta. This is in black micarta. Got black hardware. Got a black coated blade of Bowler N690. Open design. Pocket clip. Flat screws. Sitting on top of the scales, but now you can't go left hand with that pocket clip. Um, you know, it's only 69 bucks on Mojave Outdoors. Now, Mojave Outdoors, I'll give you the link to their site. They're the biggest Kaiser dealer, and that's what they're doing. And then they're doing a bunch of exclusives. Kaiser's doing a bunch of exclusives for them. So if you didn't see my Deadpool, what was that? A fixed blade. And I'm going to show you a picture of it right freaking now. The Kaiser Deadpool Harpoon. Okay. So this is a knife that I did a little while ago. And this was a an exclusive. And then if you roll this over, I'll show you on the front. Um, here's the genie. This is Mojave, your best Kaiser knife retailer, because they're doing all that kind of thing. And then sign up uh, and and get some free stuff, free discounts or something. Dead Pool Feist. This will be in CPM 3V. What was I saying 4V for? <laughs> Oh my God, he must have thought I was crazy. Okay, 3V. So this will be interesting too because the Feist has been, you know, in uh, titanium and this and that. So this will be interesting as well. That's kind of hung up in shipping right now as I speak right now. But uh, probably when this gets posted, they may be in and ready. I don't know. So check in on that. That should be an interesting knife to have. This one swings up. Well, let me see the lock up on it. Yeah, 20% might be uh, all. Uh, pass through's easy to engage. It's got a little jimping there, but it just swings down. Uh, almost dangerously so. It just drops. And yeah, maybe, maybe just get right up on this part of the choil and then you won't you won't get stabbed, uh, but uh, that is a drop. Boink, just that, that's amazing. And you know what, as a front flipper, I think this is pretty good. Let me see this. Oh, contoured uh, micarta scales. It's, it just is so fidget friendly, and that's one thing I think they say on their side about it, but I didn't know until I got it in my hand. And, uh, and it's easy. It's easy to uh, front flip if you so desire to do that. And then you can get in here with your opposite finger and flick it open. So whether you like to middle finger flick or you want to do the front flipper, that's pretty nice. Not bad. Let me see if I got a little piece of paper. All kinds. Of, it's very little piece of paper. Oh, okay. Okay, just testing the initial sharpness of the blade. It seems pretty sharp. And this might be nice. I mean, it's a flat grind. Uh, you know, you can pierce and pick with that blade. And then you can, you know, you can slice with it too. And you see where you are here. I mean, it's not like you got a big flipper tab and you're like this, right? Or like that, you know, that kind of thing. You're here. You're you're making good contact. I mean, you could chop vegetables, all kinds of things with this steak knife, rope, twine, whatever. But it's a light knife. It's a light, light knife. So uh, it's not a huge knife, but it's not small either. Ah, let me see. Two point two, two point two six ounces at 64 grams okay but let's compare it to old blue baby um you know if we get the bolsters lined up it's not a whole bunch different this is three and a half inch 
Uh, basically, it's three and a half inch. So let's see what we got here. And we have a three and a half inch blade. I mean, we get the same length blade as the Spyderco does, but the Spyderco overall is eight and a quarter. So it's just Spyderco PM2 has a longer handle, but this is seven and three quarter overall length at 19 and a half centimeters. And of course, you got like a 90. Uh, millimeter length blade when it's three and a half inches so very lightweight really a full-size blade you got a little bit of cutaway here which i guess you could get up on if you wanted to for close work but also sharpening if you're using like a kme or wicked edge or something it should be nice that way or even a stone kind of keeps everything out of the way here that's nice I, I like it um and it's this one's affordable and it's also really doesn't need to be a coated blade because it's uh stainless but i mean kind of in keeping with the black micarta the black hardware everything so they've made it kind of a a blacked out badass knife so um very open very light uh handle so neutral uh the ergos are fine. Reverse grip is easy. Where's my balance? Balance, balance. Okay. Easy to find there. Let's see what the design flow is like. And blade to handle length. And blade to handle length is plenty. And here, of course, is intentional. Other than that, fine. Uh, detent. I, you know what? Uh, it, it's so light and the the blade is so light okay I got it um, the detent's not real strong but I mean it's not gonna accidentally come out uh, you gotta really hit it pretty good uh, so it's right it's right with what it needs to be because you need to be able to do that right uh, and so really as a front flipper super lightweight Still a decent sized blade, and you know what? Let's check out there. Thick that blade. It's probably not real thick blade stock. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be three millimeter. 0.12. Yeah, three point one millimeter. Eleven point nine millimeters at 0.46. So 0.46. Yeah, that's the same thickness as the PM2. But I mean, as far as real estate in your pocket, front to back, I mean, this is way less. This is 3.8 ounces. So you got one point, what, 1 1.6 ounces lighter, same blade length, uh, less overall length, way lighter, still just as thin, even though it's contoured scales. So, I mean, I was going to try and flick it with my thumb here in this cutout. I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't do that. I usually do just a reverse and or, uh, yeah, there's a flipper tab here. Yeah. So this is fun to do as well. So, yeah, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of the real steel, uh, you know, that, that, that they've had out for a long time. And eh, it's lightweight, but I mean, it was aluminum and it kind of got slick until they started doing it in G10. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, uh, and there's some others out there as well. But this one, I think has had a, a lot of success with uh, being pretty popular comes in a box this is the information on the box by the way and uh, steel liner of course here's your Mojave stickers and everything you get join their Mo club and uh, and in here you get there's a microfiber cloth in here and then your basic kind of generic paperwork they don't really give you anything specific to the knife they kind of put that on the outside label see this paperwork here 
kind of just standard stuff. It's always upside down, isn't it? That kind of thing. And then on the back, pictures of manufacturing, but not of that knife particularly. So, and then there's your cloth. So, yeah, I mean, uh, nice to get a microfiber cloth with it. Uh, the box is reasonably decent, uh, that kind of thing. So, yeah, okay. So, let's see. Now, that wasn't tough. There goes that. Let's get our number six. These are not number eights on their body. Uh, it'd be nice. I wish everybody good at number eights. Uh, you, that way you don't need two wrenches as well. And you know what? What else is holding me in here? Oh, I got a screw under the pocket clip. Yeah, okay. I was going, uh, there's a... There's a standoff there, and I know there's a screw coming from this side. So we're going to take the pocket clip off. And just like that, and those screws look the same size. Not a problem. That kicks out. We need one more screw to come out. I don't know. Does that, I mean, is there something I'm not understanding here that, uh, that this could not have been moved up to where this was and you could have skipped one of these holes and it had been simpler from a production standpoint as well I would think uh, here's the here's the scale my Carter scale lock bar side and we have a liner and we think we're going to remove the liner. We think we are. Ah, plastic. Little tools to, little plastic pry bars. You can get them on Amazon. Get a whole bag of them for next to nothing. Or, you know, you can choose what kind you want too, but... I mean, it comes in handy, you know, when you're trying to pop off a, a liner. Okay, there's your blade stop, and here's your liner. It's pretty minimalist. And ceramic uh, bearings, it looks pretty clean inside. And uh, there's the bearings, one side. And obviously you don't need steel washers because you got steel liners. Here's your pivot with a flat spot on it. Flat spot pivot. So are we getting flat? Yep, we're getting flat. Definitely not fat. Okay, now, so the liner, yeah, it's attached over here. There's your standoffs. Here's a liner on the lock bar side. Looks clean too. And uh, get your bearings out. And it looks like I found my bearings. I got my bearings. Okay, uh, yeah. Pretty clean. All right, what are we going to do? We're going to put it back together. So, yeah, flat spot on the side there. Got to line that up, make it right, push it through. Push it through if we got it lined up correctly. Come on. Ah, yeah. Woo. Woo, you tight getting in there. Okay, now. I thought I had it a little off or something, but it's just a tight push. Okay. Not exactly big, huge, wide bearing rings, but what are you going to do? You know, this is a, yeah, there we go. Just a small, lightweight little knife, and let's put this and line up with the, uh, with the standoffs here. And the blade stop, and we've got it. Click down. Okay. Now we just got to put on the outside scale, which 
fits pretty nicely because it's machined to get those you know liners nested in there so that makes it pretty easy and uh, nothing wrong about uh, this this is uh, 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 this fits back in really nicely and pretty much centered let's put the other two screws in oh and then the pocket clip by the way And those two body screws look to be the exact same length. So that shouldn't be an issue. Right there. Come on. Yeah. Then. You can do this. Drop this down here. It looks like there was a little bit of thread locker on those. Okay, that, and this, tighten them up a little bit, okay, where are we, looks centered, um, it's not as guillotine-ish well, as it was, but still wants to come get me. Yeah, okay. Nah, it's... Hold on. Nah, it's about what it was. Not bad. Back with the genie. And, uh, yeah. Pretty ingenious uh, little, little front flipper. Lightweight, a lot of blade, easy carry... Nice little knife, yeah. And, you know, really inexpensive as well. So head off to Mojave if you want. Um, if you're interested in some of the Kaiser knives, take a look at, like, the Matt Degnan uh, Roach. I think he's the one that designed that. So instead of titanium, they're doing that. And, of course, I think they did it in the Vanguard series in G10. But they're doing it in uh, Micarta on Mojave. So they've got some other things going on there uh, that you might want to be, uh, you know, you might want to check out. I'll leave you alone. We do. We love those knives. Subscribe to my channel if you would. You might want to join my Patreon group and get in early on the monthly knife sales and they're probably going to be bi-weekly pretty soon. And you guys, stay sharp.